G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in on the west side of the map. We've got Kapoach. He's going to be playing some English for us today. His opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map. We've got Hera who is playing the Abbasid Dynasty. This is the fourth game in the series between these two guys. Uh, for anybody who's unfamiliar with exactly what I'm talking about, this is part of a show match series that Lidacor has hosted. If you don't know who Lidacor is, make sure you go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description over towards Lidacor's YouTube page. He's a fellow caster, uh, just like me. So if you're interested in seeing more Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you go and check him out. This is one of his show matches that he is hosting. Uh, so Hera going to be opening us up with a uh, double scout opening. So uh, no real surprises there. This is becoming more and more meta, it seems. Uh, do note that he is playing the Abbasid, so going to be probably looking for an early dock for himself. Uh, we'll have a look and see if he's got any deep sea fish. There's, looks like there's one deep water fish out over here. Another deep water fish up towards the north, and it looks like Kapoach has already found that. Oh, this is the best spawn you could possibly ask for right here. Kapoach is going to be so happy with himself. This is absolutely ludicrous how good this is. So let's just talk about this. You know, uh, we've got Hera who's going to be, you know, having to deal with, with this. And it, it's not terrible. If you've got a deep water fish, then you're going to be a happy camper. But this is just absolute insanity. They, they, these fishing boats, they're not even going to need to turn around. They're just drop the fish off right there it'll be it'll be very very sweet for Kapoach. so Kapoach already quite heavy on wood so a curious decision to be going english on this map so typically we see civilizations like delhi that are strong on this map china is another civilization that's quite strong on this map mongols obviously another strong contender on this map players obviously have already exhausted some civilizations through this uh through this show match event uh, and I'm assuming that the uh, the rules would prevent any sort of replays of a civilization, even if you win or even if you lose with that civilization. So we'll have to see uh, what the players look to get uh, throughout the rest of the series. But uh, Hera at the moment looking to uh, contribute to a few more villages over towards that uh, that woodland. In fact, he's only got five out there at the moment. I don't know whether that's going to be enough for him. We can see he's obviously going to be able to continue training villages, but keep in mind the most recent, well, not the most recent patch, but the, the patch before the last one, uh, fishing boats, in the cost was increased uh, up to 75 wood. So something to always be cognizant of. So we'll take a look at the map. So the map is Ancient Spires. So this map has been changed recently as well. So the sacred sites have gone down from three down to two. So a little bit of a Delhi nerf, a little bit of a Rus nerf. Any sieve that's going to work towards those sacred sites. Not going to be as strong on this map uh, anymore. But uh, Hera now going to be adding the House of Wisdom. Not yet to really go uh, towards any sort of gold investment. In fact, his gold seems very far away from his town center. You can see it, this is... This is a really far away gold. What the heck is going on here? He's got the the berries, which are like right inside the, the line of sight of the town center. And then this gold mine is just miles away. Could you imagine if he was playing against Mongols? Oops, uh, playing against the Mongols. And like the Mongol player came and like tr and towered this and like towered this one. Like you, he would be stuck in age one forever. Uh, but uh, fortunately, he's not playing against Mongols. He's playing against the English. Uh, and uh, Kapoch now going to be paying a little bit of attention to Hera's villager. You can see Hera did actually get a sneaky little sheep carcass kill. Uh, but uh, Kapoach behind this got four or four shipping boats, four shipping boats out, four fishing uh, boats out now. So uh, he is going to be heading into that fifth one very shortly as well. Uh, multiple uh, scouts now looking towards the south of the map, and that villager is going to survive. We see another house going to be going up there for Hera. So he's uh, really starting to uh, look at uh, committing to that economy. Uh, going to actually be going idle here on the dock for a little bit. No, no, no villager, no docking queue or no uh, fishing boat in the queue at this point in time. Uh, Kapoch going to steal a couple of sheep from Hera's base as the three sheep do come back in uh, towards the front of the town center. And Hera going to be heading back out onto the map. Loves his scouts. So let's take a little bit more of a uh, an objective approach to this map or an, an analytical approach to this map. See how it spawned out. So we've got three relics very, very close to Kapoch over on his side. One relic here for Hera and then another relic up here. So very interesting, but it's kind of, uh, it, it's all because of the way that this lake or this river here has spawned. Uh, so it just makes it a little bit more difficult. But you can really see that, you know, uh, Kapoch has got a very, very good relic spawn here. Uh, sacred sites as well, uh, somewhat balanced, but uh, mainly that gold mine in the middle as well. I mean, Kapoch has got a pretty decent spawn here. I'm going to be honest, uh, if, I, I would definitely favor Kapoch's spawn over Hera's. But Hera now going to be clicking up to the next stage. Going to be going up with the economic wing. Uh, and we'll take a look over at Kapoch, see what he is doing. So not yet to click up, about to click up any second. Now, there we go. The council hall going to be coming down. Dangerous council hall location. Apologies for the voice. I, I just lost my voice for a brief period there, but uh, it's back. It's back. So da dangerous uh, council hall location. So if Hera puts on early aggression, 
and gets an archer mass over his opponent, this council hall is effectively dead. Uh, so that's two archery rangers gone just because you can't control where those archers pop out from. So you can't have them popping out safely on the back line of the TC. They always pop out from the front door. So very dangerous move from Kapoach to have it out on the front here. Obviously convenient because uh, it's right next to his villagers. He wants to get as close to his enemy base as possible. But uh, by the same token, it is it's dangerous. So you got, something you've got to be careful of. And uh, we'll take a look now at Hera. So he's uh, got the fishing boats beginning to expand. And look at this. We've got a little bit of a spot out from his opponent. So Kapoch actually coming down here and looking to challenge this water. Uh, interestingly, Hera looking to challenge his enemy's water with his land. But Kapoch actually saying, you know what? I'm going to stick it out and uh, and fight it out on water uh, against your water. So we've also got an outpost going to be coming down here for Kapoch as well. So he's probably going to be looking to get out a, uh, a galley of some sort. We'll have to see exactly how he goes. He's going to be aging up here quite a fair bit before Hera. You can see he is stuck behind. One of the consequences to playing the Ambassador Dynasty is that you are locked into those two-minute age-up timers. You can't. You do not have the way, uh, any sort of way to speed that one up. So it will mean that Kapoach is able to take a, a bit of an advantage here. Going to be getting out that galley now. You can see it's sitting at 180, 180, so quite expensive, but at the same time, a pretty decent investment. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Hera look to add in an outpost, which he's going to be doing, and maybe even a second dock himself. It doesn't really have a place for it, though. Uh, so this is going to be really difficult. When Kapoch has got like all of this area that he could be putting in docks, whereas Hera, he can't put any down here. It looks like it's, he's probably going to be blocked off through that way as well. Uh, probably going to need to put in some more outposts over here from uh, on, on this side, but he's going to be in a very difficult spot. So probably the best way for him to play this is to even the score out by uh, adding in or, or taking basically neutralizing his enemy's uh, water economy. But now towards the north, we've got those longbows beginning to move out towards Hera's units. He's going to be having a difficult time here, as this is slowly going to be trickling in damage. But realistically, Village is always going to be able to come out and heal that one up, and that's exactly what Kapoch is doing right now down towards the south of the map. We do have that galley going to come out, and keep in mind that galley is affected by the network of castles. It's going to be firing very, very quickly onto these fishing boats, and there they go, or there they begin to, to burn down. Hera going to have to be heading back towards this uh, this shoreline fish, but now going to be able to push away from the north-hand side, so those scouts do get taken out. At least one of them does. The second scout manages to get away. We'll take a look and see exactly what we've got here for Hera. Kind of looks like he might be heading towards that fast castle build, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's uh, he's got uh, very heavy on wood. Now, one of the things that Hera hasn't done, he's, been, he's playing the Abbasid. Uh, he hasn't gone into multiple ponds, so I'm a big fan of doing this as the Abbasid. You literally take every pond. That, like, that's what you do. You take the middle pond, you take this pond over here, you take the pond down to this side, and you come up and you take this pond as well. It's a little bit hard to find a spot in here. You probably should have dock in there, but you literally just take every single pond. You've got cheaper docks as the Abbasid, so you kind of, you, you want to abuse that cheap dock. So with only the single dock out, he's only really taken advantage of this, at, at this point in time, a very small amount, because you can see his docks are only 75 wood. Uh, but uh, yeah, ideally he would love to be spamming more and more of those docks, get them out and about all over the map and make his opponent address him because he can then get fishing boats out in all those ponds. And then, you know, you're sure you're going up against a, an English player. They're going to be able to push through. They're going to be able to do damage to you, but you're going to be able to capitalize on that. Double Dow going to be coming out. Now we see that uh, that outpost also going to be um, garrisoned up with a villager inside. Going to be putting out a lot of damage. Uh, Dow's doing their best to fight against the galley. Galley going to be having a very easy time against it. Longbowman beginning to push in towards the wood line as well for Kapoch. Now, uh, he's looking pretty strong at this point. I would definitely favor his position as the double galley is always going to beat out the double Dow. Even the triple Dow is probably going to lose to the double galley. Uh, just to, to show you guys a bit of the interaction. So we've got 30 damage coming out in total uh, with five armor versus this, which is only, it's eight times four, so 32. But uh, obviously the five armor there is really going to do a lot of work. So they're only doing three damage a pop there. Works out to be 12 damage compared to the galleys, which are doing 10 damage Four, so it's six, so 18 in their volley. So 10 versus 18, or 12 versus 18. So basically 50% more damage, and you can see they've got more health on them as well. Obviously, they do cost a little bit more as well, so 180 versus 90. But I tell you what, I would much rather pay the 90 gold and have access to that galley. That is a very mean... Uh, a very mean ship, a very mean warship. We've got Longbowman continuing to move around the back of the base of Hera. So a nice little commitment here. And I love the fact that he's doing it up around the edge of the map. So only going to be able to to spot that out uh, with a, a uh, with very bare line of sight there. 
Those, uh, those galleys continuing to cause trouble out here for the Dows. Ideally, he wants to commit to this fight and then just f heal up with his fishing boats. That is the advantage that he's got. Now, towards the front of his base, Hera is under under attack again or under siege once again. A, a distinct lack of walls here for Hera. I would have loved to have seen a, a single wall segment go up here, another wall segment across like this, uh, just to prevent those longbows from coming in and, and harassing. Ideally, going up against the English, you want to try and wall yourself in. It's something that's so uh, frustrating to deal with uh, throughout the game. But now, the fishing boats moving towards the north. It looks like that third Dow is going to be going down. It's going to be down to two Dows for, for Hera at this point. Four remaining galleys for his opponent, so a really difficult spot for Hera. He's probably going to be losing this water sooner rather than later, and you can see he's trying his best to hold on here, but uh, over towards his base, he has got a lot of worries on his mind, that's for sure. Plus one defense going to be coming out for Hera now, so he's going to be having two armor there on the longbows. Not terrible. Or rather, uh, two armor on the horsemen for the longbows. Uh, but uh, now we've uh, got a galley here that manages to get down to half HP. You can see that Hera is kind of diving for it, but it's just going to be in, uh, in in vain, unfortunately. And Hera now probably going to be losing the water completely. Keep in mind, his opponent, Kapoach, has actually... Has he gone through that already? Jeez, he went through that quick, didn't he? Holy dooly, he went through that quick. That's uh, We're at 10 minutes right now. Eight fishing boats. I didn't realize they went through that that quick, but uh, I guess it makes a lot of sense. Villagers all going to be going down here. Hera going to be losing. I think that was pretty close to five villagers. One, two, three. There's at least four. I think there might be a fifth one under there as well. It's a bit hard to see. Yeah, that is a fifth villager. So five villagers going down there. He's going to be losing a whole bunch of fishing boats as well. So Hera not looking good in this fourth game in the series. Obviously going up against Kapocha's English. That is one of the more difficult civilizations. Kapocha, a very strong English player. And Kapocha actually looking to balance out his economy. May potentially be looking towards that castle age. So we'll have to pay attention to that. Uh, Hera going to be doing the same thing. You can see he's looking about uh, ready to click up now. So one of the things for Hera that I would have loved to have seen him do is go towards a second or even a third town center. He's gone up with the economic wing. He's got fresh food stuff. He's paying 25 food for his villagers. So that's one of the things that you can do. You can leverage your early food economy and turn that into a big land economy. It's one of the best ways that you can play this map. It's part of the reason why China is so strong because they do have that ability. And these longbows, they're not really able to put out a huge amount of damage when you've got an opponent that is continuing to throw resources into this water fight. Uh, and as a result, behind that, you can boom up. So I would have loved to have seen Hera going up to the next stage, actually just uh, looking to drop down two or three TCs uh, and, and uh, look to boom. Even just throwing down outposts like this would have been a great decision as well. Walling up, really just playing the boom game and uh, and having those cheap villages. The only problem would have been his, his food. But obviously, if you're out on the map, if you if you got uh, lots of different ponds that you're you're collecting up for, and I, you know, Capoc hasn't even uh, spotted this one out recently as well. So I think he probably could have hidden that in. And now we're going to be losing. These outposts going to be going down. For Hera, or uh, they're at least going to be uh, being cancelled, uh, at least for the moment, prevented from going up, but Kapoch still yet to click up to the next stage. You can see balancing out those resources now, though, and the villagers trying their best to get this outpost up. Not going to have a lot of luck. The uh, Longbows here got amazing range. Hera going to be trying his best, but unfortunately going to be taking his time to get up to the next stage. We'll have a look and see what he looks to drop down. So he's already got double stable out. We'll check what other production he's got. Double stable and a dock is all he's got at the moment. Um, so probably going to be looking towards Lancers once he gets up to the next age. But not a lot of production here for him. You can see he's having a bit of trouble at the moment. Uh, and uh, that forward gold really being punished. Now, obviously, there is another gold mine out here that he is aware of. You can see he's pop put down that... Uh, mining camp and he's got villagers heading out in that direction uh but uh yeah being punished severely for this we'll take a look over at Kapok's base as well Kapok actually have, has the same thing so he's got the, the forward gold vein uh here and Kapok going up to the next age so dropping down that king's palace looking to stay ahead when it comes to the economic creep and uh continuing to apply pressure towards the front of his opponent's base we can see the score really beginning to build at the moment now about a 4k lead Hera completely shut down on water gonna be losing the outpost the dock goes down completely and four galleys remain out here but uh not gonna be a significant uh, significant threat. And now over towards Kapoch. I mean, at this point, it's a little bit too too little too late. There's absolutely no resources left in here. You can see these fishing boats are actually idle, or at least some of them are idle. Uh, there's only 109 uh, fish left in this. So it, it's almost like, you know, he's come out here, he's pushed, but it's too little too late at this point. You know, he's been able to turn this food economy into an absolutely huge land mass. He's also got up to the next age. So he's going to be great. He's going to be absolutely fine, and he's going to be able to transition that into a farm economy. So Hera having a bit of a tough time. You know, if he'd gotten that in nice and early, the way that he was looking before with the scouts, if he'd managed to do that one, he'd be absolutely fine. But unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. Down towards the south, the dock continues to be under attack. A little bit of a raid up towards the north. Hera going to be trying his best to sneak past, but those uh, spearmen are going to pick them off, or at least find them out. 
King's Battle is going to continue draining up villages at this point. Going to be looking to transition into those farms. Sounds like a wolf is out on the map. First time the wolf has uh, been found, despite it being so close to the base of Kapoach. It's got to wake up. Got to wake up. But now a, another push coming in towards the back of Hera's base. And Hera, this gold mine out here. You can see the villagers did actually evacuate. Not sure where they went, but maybe back towards this position. And the Siege Workshop coming out. This is a really wise choice. It's, it's, I'll be honest, it's kind of in a bad position. I would have loved for it to be back here where it's a little bit hidden away. Because uh, Kapoch is very easily going to spot this towards the front of the base. That's my suspicion. And immediately he's going to drop down his own Siege Workshop and begin training Springles. That, that is the response that I would expect to see. So we'll watch as it happens now. Actually, where is that? It's up over this way. Oh, who knows? Maybe that was a good spot. I, I was I was uh, positing that it should have been down in this position, but had it been down in that position, it's probably going to get scattered out by the spears. The longbow's heading in from the uh, the left hand side as well. Spears got that veteran upgrade through. Longbow's got that veteran upgrade through. Actually, let me have a look. Where are they? Yeah, they've got the, that longbow upgrade through. So still yet to actually spot that siege workshop shop. So who knows? Maybe it was a good decision to go up there. But now going to be heading in towards the wood line of Hera. It's going to be trying his best. That dock still going down towards the south. Actually, he Hera's got a, uh, a backlight coming out. That's probably going to be able to deal pretty effectively with that. At the same time, push around the back of Hera's base. Uh, Hera's definitely got a, a decent mass here, but it's going to be nowhere near enough to deal with all of these spears and longbows. The, the mass out from uh, Kapoch is very significant at this point, but the Mangonel is really where uh, where Hera may potentially shine. Kapoch going to be coming in around towards this front position again. May potentially spot this out. Now, Mangonels, uh, ideally, you want to be fighting with surprise. Now, we see a barracks coming down at the moment, but I'm, I'm really waiting for him to spot this one out. And it's so... Oh, Mangonel going to be getting the shots off first, so very nice. Able to trade out that damage. So he's going to fall back. You see him fall back on all fronts, I would suspect, and immediately going to be looking to drop down, uh, I would suspect, suspect a siege workshop you might even go for a forward one actually we've already got a siege workshop coming down for him so maybe he was potentially thinking about manganels himself uh but now that back lot looking to clean up the water but keep in mind now we've got kapoch actually coming down here he's going to be doing his best to actually take control of this water and, and begin uh fishing out over here as well keep in mind he can always take advantage of the deep sea fish back going to be out going to have a tough time going up against the hulk though you guys will know from your experiences playing against the french that the hulk does not like to be fucked with Double Mangonel now going to be coming out for Hera. He's going to be looking down towards this position. He might actually get a pretty decent volley off here if Kapoch isn't playing, paying attention. Uh, units are going to manage to do a fair bit of damage. The spears do brace up. Um, and uh, that uh, Mangonel not going to be really suffering too much damage. Uh, now the uh, Mangonels are unfortunately going to have to pack up there. Uh, but uh, going to be able to clean up these longbows. So looking pretty decent at the, at the same time to the north. We've got another push coming in from Kapoch. And you can really see the control that Kapoch has got throughout this game. Managing to clean that one up and... I guess that sort of begs the question as to what Hera can even do in this position, as uh, undoubtedly we've got Mangonels, or rather uh, Springles coming out soon, surely. Kapoch, uh, you're going to need to respond to these Mangonels, and uh, splitting up your infantry isn't going to be an appropriate response, uh, especially when you've got that many units to back them up. And now more spears and more longbows coming in, being ultra annoying. So just doing a couple of raids, and now Kapoch looking to actually put on a bit of economic hurt towards his opponent. Kapoch sitting on 72 villages at the moment, 39 villages for Hera. This isn't looking good for Hera at this point in time. If you've watched through to this point in the video, I'm assuming that you've uh, you probably tried to catch the first three games. You would know that at the moment, Kapoch is up 3-0 to Hera. So despite Hera being ranked 28, Kapoch being ranked 71, uh, Kapoch has won the first three games. And this is the fourth game. This is technically match point. If Hera loses this game, he loses the series, he loses the show match, and, uh, and Lidacore's show match uh, would end right there. So uh, it would be unfortunate for Hera to go out, but it's not looking good for him at this point. You can see the score is subsequently reflected towards a, an English victory at the moment as he manages to shore up this, uh, this south side uh, spawn. I guess you'd call it the south side water spawn. The south side sea spawn. Uh, that's what we've got. But now that Hulk going to be coming up towards a great position there. Manganel getting him some decent shots off, taking out three. The Wolf going to be getting in on the action as well. Might try and get in. He's trying his best. I think he's going to at least get one of these longbows. Let's see how he goes. He's taking it out slowly. Manganel's looking towards that position as well. And now we've got a little bit of a raid coming in towards, uh, in towards Kapoge. So Hera doing the right thing, picking up the reinforcements. Uh, this is a great move from him. Uh, still, do we have that Springwood finally coming out, it seems. So a, a great decision from him. And uh, we've got more men at arms now going to be coming out. That Springwood. We'll take a look from Hera's perspective and see. I don't think he spots that that position out just yet. But those Lancers are going to be looking to come in, doing a great job as well. Uh, curiously, oh no, he's playing the Abbasids. Never mind. I, thought, I was going to say, the English have got Lancers? No, it is the Abbasid who have got Lancers. The English, of course, have got Knights. But now Hera 
Uh, going to be in a bit of a difficult spot as Kapoch begins to move back towards his position. But I'm going to say, I like the way Hera's playing this. If there's a way that you get back into this game, it's by killing your enemy's villagers. The problem is that your enemy is on two town centers. He's playing English. He's got one of the safest food economies in the game. Curious why he didn't go un right underneath the town center uh, with his farms but uh, and, and his mills. But... Uh, I mean, we can always ask him later. We can always ask him later. And now uh, Lance are going to get struck down here by some mana arms out towards the middle, out towards the open. And uh, some Siege going to be potentially moving in to reinforce that position. We'll take a look as the Mangonels begin across the field. There are three Mangonels here. Hera also going into mana arms himself. So a, a definitely a wise play. And now going to be pushing back towards his base. He will spot out the mana arms of his opponent. If he can get some shots off on this and, and actually hit this. Uh, Kapoch is aware of the Mangonels now. He's going to spot them down. A really, really nice volley there. Mana arms going to be coming out in response. These units going to be able to move in and potentially clean this up completely. One, two, three. Beautiful shots there from the Mangonels. Very nice. That, that's what Hera needs to get back into this game. He's looking good. A fourth Mangonel going to be coming out as well. Uh, I think three is really like the, the key number that you want. You know, you're able to double shot um, any potential... Um, uh, uh, men at arms, you're able to one shot any longbows, able to one shot any spears. Four, it, it becomes a bit of an awkward number. Five, that's starting to sound a little bit better. And six, of course, that's your really key number. Manganel's looking pretty good at this point, though. Hera going to be trying his best. Springlord going to be coming out as well. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as the Manganel shot comes down. Rains absolute fire from the heavens. And Manganel's going to be doing a great job here, supporting the infantry on the front line. Getting a lot of damage off. I'm really impressed with these Manganels and the way that they've turned out. Hera's just got to be careful. You can see that there's a lot of infantry that continues on this front line. A couple of men at arms managing to make it through. Going to be looking to burn down that Springlord. They do get it down for Manganel. Still going to be up here for Hera. Hera looking incredible at the moment. He is asked. He's, he's prayed right now and he's got his prayers answered because he is looking pretty good. Manganel shot coming off once again. And just, oh my lord, so much damage on these bad boys. Really demonstrating why they are the kings when it comes to Siege. And now they're going to begin firing down here on the galleys of his opponent, Kapoch. Probably uh, going to be happy to give that up if it just stalls out a potential push from his opponent. Score still wide ahead for Kapoch. And uh, we'll take a look at the villager count. So 93 for Kapoch, 25 military. Uh, compare that to Hera, who's sitting on 45 and 29. So not a significant amount. And Hera now going to continue adding in Springlets uh, as a somewhat anti-siege mechanism or a counter-siege mechanism. Uh, and uh, going to begin looking to push forward. Um, unfortunately, doesn't finish off that Springlet. There he goes now. But uh, doesn't have a lot of infantry here. Doesn't really have a lot of uh, of building killing units either. He kind of needs a ram or two. But look at all these uh, men at arms beginning to build. So we've got full men at arms and springlords now coming out for Kapoch here. And, uh, you know, if he wins one fight, he basically wins the game here. Hera on the back line, still under attack. These villagers just taking so much damage. Hera down to 41 villagers at the moment. That's going to continue to go down. Men at arms are going to be in here for Hera to look to back that up. And he's got to be careful here. He's got to be careful. He spots the men at arms that are looking to flank him right now. He is. There is always the potential of that coming in. I'd love to see maybe even a villager pull out towards here and just wall off these little spots on the outside. But now the men at arms going to continue to push Hera around. Kaboja looking uh, and uh, trying his best to sort of force his opponent into a difficult spot. Manganels could get a really good volley off here if Hera's not careful. Or rather, if Hera is careful. Beautiful volley comes in. Actually does a great job. Hits the rain down on five of those uh, men at arms. And now towards the back of the base, it looks like that raid is going to get cleaned up. More Manganel, or more uh, men at arms still coming out. And I think... Uh, Kapoch at this point is just trying to buy time. He realizes that he is behind when it comes to the military. It's never a good spot to be when your enemy has got five mangonels and you've got absolutely no response to that. Uh, so it's going to take him time to get there, but you can see that he's doing the right thing. He's just doing the run around at this point, and that's really going to seal the game out for Kapoch because behind this, you can see that the, the correct response is happening. He's dropping down a keep. Uh, he's making his own springlords, continuing to make men at arms. There's four springlords now out for Kapoch. He has added in a second. Has he added in a second? I want to just check quickly uh, as to whether he's added in a second um, Siege Workshop. No, he hasn't. Only got the, the single one out. But another raid coming through. So Kapoch on 104 villages. Hera on 43 at the moment. Kapoch really keeping him down. Meanwhile, you know, he's been going up with the, with the two town centers. So he's having a great time. Um, and uh, now going to be continuing to push through. You see those uh, men at arms struggling. And have a look at the armor that's on those bad boys. Eight, seven. Compare that to the four, six of Hera's. And you can really just see the difference here. Four armor difference between these. The English men at arms are absolutely beautiful. 
Mangonels trying their best to get some damage on. We can see that there's four Mangonels. Once you get that fifth Mangonel, that's the critical number that you need. Managing to take that out because the fifth Mangonel is actually going to enable you to start one-shotting those men at arms. So that's really the number that you want to get to. But keep in mind behind this, Hera is uh, going to be under potential threat because Kapoch is continuing to push up. He's got out plenty of Springles here and this is going to be more than enough to begin shooting the, down those Mangonels. They've got 240 health on them and keep in mind a Springled does 120 damage to Mangonels. So two shots and it's going to be going the way of the Dodo there. So got to be very careful. Hera now realizing that the men at arms are beginning to push up. He's got to fall back into this position and you can see he's got a pretty decent spot here. So he is sort of holding out and we can see the Mangonels getting off a good shot. Beautiful damage coming down on them. He needs to move them back and he's doing a great job of that. Uh, now looking to open up on another potential shot. Still needs to continue moving back. The men at arms are going to do a great job uh, here screening for them. But there's so many men at arms coming out from his opponent and the Springles doing their best to come through. Hera is going to tap out, ladies and gentlemen. Your champion for this show match is Kaboch. So well played to him. If you've enjoyed watching this castle game and you'd love to see more, make sure you check out Lidicor. I'll leave a link in the description of this game over towards his channel. And of course, I'll leave a link in the description to both of these guys. They are content creators as well. So go check them out. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this show match series.